Right, so a little bit about charging. What I norm the way I normally charge zero is actually through the domestic socket. It's through the onboard charger. It's just down here, underneath the bike, is where the charger lives. Uh, for those who haven't previously seen, actually lives inside the belly pan there. Not inherently great design, I have to say. It it does make it susceptible to water ingress. Fortunately, at least in my case, that seems to have been fixed with the new chargers that Zero use on this generation of bikes. But I did have issues historically. Okay, so ordinarily, when I get home, I try to charge the bike up to around about 50%. Um, it's, it's better for the health of the battery if you leave it kind of midway. Essentially, don't leave it too low state of charge and don't leave it too high state of charge for, for an extended period. If you're going to be using it the next day, it's not a problem, you know, but if you're going to be using it, you know, a few days apart, it's best to just leave it sort of midway charged. So looking at it at the moment, we're on 47% state of charge. That's because when I got home, whatever I was left on, I would have plugged it in and, and basically used the, the rule of thumb is an hour, an hour's charging from a domestic socket will give me 10%. So... You know, if I get back and I've got 10% battery left, I'll tend to plug it in and charge for four hours. Now, I can do this on the basis of a timer because I have uh, this effigy wireless. It's a Wi-Fi controlled socket um, and I have an app on the phone which allows me to say uh, I can specify times, uh, you know, schedule, scheduled charge timers. So I can say come on at two in the morning and charge for three hours or something like that. Or as I do normally... You know, in this case, if I'd got back with 10% and I wanted to charge it to 50, I could set a countdown timer. So, say, charge it for four hours. But that's usually daytime. You know, we've got we've got some solar panels on the roof, so we can we can make use of that sunshine. I simply get back, reach for this, find the socket on the side, plug that in, and then I will engage the app. So I come into this app here, Ego, and I click on this option here, and I can say, "Well, let's go with let's go with the charge timer for one hour." So I click on that to activate that, and then all I do is I click on the power icon here. You can actually hear the bike click, possibly there, and there you go. You can see the bike is charging. Nice and straightforward. You can see the power lights on on that. So that's charging from a domestic socket. And that's going to be charging at, uh, well, 1.3 kilowatts-ish. Uh, in fact, we can have a look. OK, so we can monitor the state of charge on the bike. If we go onto the battery screen, we can see it's charging round about, well, it's hovering round about 1.1 kilowatts, drop to 918, 816, 918. Oh, 1.2 kilowatts, steady on. It's all over the place a little bit. Charging amps going up and down. But uh, anyway, there's there's a 1.3 kilowatt charger on board the bike, so that's the maximum it will charge at. Now what we'll do is we're going to use the fast charger. This EVSE, Electric Vehicle Servicing Equipment, or charger as those of us who are normal would call it. Yes, I know it's not actually the charger. It's the thing that provides electricity to the vehicle. Anyway, um, let's uh, try and do this with one hand. This is a Type 2 connection on this end. That's the standard, irrespective of what's on the other end, for domestic charging. So when I say fast charging, we're talking around about seven kilowatts typically domestic charging typical scenario right this is a type one end this is actually we're familiar with for since 2014 when we got the nissan leaf this is the connection we used on the nissan leaf but it also happens to be the same connection that is used on the zero dsr so we open the charge tank slot there and we plug this in now, it's not doing anything at the moment for a couple of reasons. Firstly, in order to accept charge, the bike needs to be powered on. 
this is waiting to go to check on the mode so at the moment right let me just explain this briefly I'll put it onto fast ch charge and we'll see the charging rate will pick up you can also hear the noise you can also hear briefly a fan go on on the bike but we'll watch that charge rate go up 3.3 kilowatts 3.8 4.2 4.7 5.2 5.6 6.7 6.8 Okay, so it looks like it's hovering around about, <laughs> yes you do hit that to make that go back on, <laughs> that's one way of doing it anyway. That's hovering around about 6.1, 6.2 kilowatts at the moment. And this display tells us that we're, I think Emma's just put the kettle on. Yeah, so we're now pulling in 9, <laughs> nine kilowatts from the grid. Woohoo! Uh, ordinarily we we're under one kilowatt usage at home in fact usually under half a kilowatt usage but uh, right now that is charging from the fast charger now i can also in, in addition to that switch the standard on board socket on and add an extra well about one kilowatt to that so it's charging even faster. So it's charging at seven, seven and a half, probably, on a, at a good time. So those are the options I have available for charging at home. If I want to charge quickly, uh, it's already gone up to 50%. Let's have a look at this end again. 6.1. And 6.2 6.3 kilowatts okay so that's this bit of kit now at the moment is, is in fast mode that means it's just taking whatever it can to to provide the vehicle with energy uh, um, with electricity now I can change that change the mode on this to one of a couple of other modes now I've put this on eco plus mode at the moment which means <clears throat> it's looking at how much solar the house is bringing in it's monitoring that. It's just dropped from 1.2 kilowatts down to 0 0.5 kilowatts. So you see a little bit of cloud cover can make a difference. But what happened? And there we go. It's going back up to 1.3, 1.4 now. So we're getting 1.3 kilowatts from the solar panels. And what I've done, I've set this unit up so that if it can provide... Um, 50% of what the vehicle requires from solar power it should start charging the vehicle so it will take some from you see we're getting 1.3 from the rooftop from the solar panels and we're taking in 0 0.6 kilowatts from the grid and the the vehicle should be a picture of a bike the vehicle is charging at 1.4 kilowatts so while the bike is except is, is capable of accepting much much more charge than that we can set it so it charges in this Eco Plus mode using the maximum solar it can, which is a nice nice way of doing it. The other options are we've got uh, an Eco mode, which keeps it charging at a low rate. So that will, that will do it. Uh, rather than providing maximum, it will trickle charge. Uh, again, I think the minimum is 1.3 kilowatts that most vehicles will take. Like I say, I would ordinarily charge the bike uh, using a domestic socket because it's going to be charging around about that rate anyway. But uh, this is the other option if I do need to fast charge. And once the bike's started charging using the charge tank, you can turn the power off. You can see I've removed the ignition key there. So the bike is completely off, but it's charging. It just needs to be switched on to commence primary ignition. No, to commence fast charging. So there we go. I think you can see there that there's fairly flexible options. I wanted to talk briefly about the Long Way Up series with relation to the choice of bike. I'm under no illusion as to why the, they went with the Harley Davidson route. It's a shame they didn't go into why. It's pretty obvious the case was that um, Harley threw quite a bit of resources at them. But to me, the natural choice of bike would have been the Zero DSR it's designed to do what they what they did on that trip 
Not only that, but it's, as you can see, as I've just proven, it's set up to charge using domestic sockets. Now, the nature of their journey, those kind of journeys they do, is that they go somewhere and they spend some time there and they talk to people. So it strikes me that having level one charging sorted out, which they didn't have initially, if you recall, for anyone who's seen it, that is. Zero, I've done that for years. So it's a really odd choice. Well, it's not a really odd choice. It's a commercial choice, clearly. It just struck me that, you know, there would have been any number of combination of options they could have used for charging scenarios on that trip if they'd taken the Zero DSR with them. They could have done domestic socket, as I've just demonstrated. Were there any destination chargers, Type 2 chargers along the way? They could use those. They could adapt from commando sockets, all sorts of things. They could have taken, as indeed I did on my Land's End John O'Groats uh, score chip, they could have taken external charge units and then charged through the accessory socket on the Zero, which just to remind anyone who doesn't know, I'll show you where that is. That's under here. Okay, you can see that this thing here that actually comes off and there's an accessory socket for charging through that. And that's the method I used on that uh, Land's End John O'Groats score trip, like I say, with external chargers. So that, that would have been another option. And they could have charged from multiple standard domestic sockets doing that and fast charged effectively. So as was the case with me on that trip, I was charging in three hours from, I could, I could charge in three hours from three standard domestic sockets. And that would have been that would have been an option open to them at a bite which costs what half the cost of the the prototype Harleys they took with them. It would have made sense to take the zeros with them. They didn't, given that they didn't explain that choice. One can surmise that it was uh, there were other reasons, shall we say, commercial reasons. The other thing I wanted to mention about the Harley Livewire. It will charge at a maximum on AC of 1.9 kilowatts, whereas the Zero, as you can see, will do a far higher charge rate, you know, six, six and a half kilowatts. And for a bike that's half the cost, yeah, okay, the, the Livewire does have DC charging, so it does have true rapid charging, which means you can charge in, in minutes, 20, 30 minutes, whatever. But the reality of the trip done by Charlie Borman and Ewan McGregor was that they weren't using rapid chargers. Somebody wants to make a guest appearance, I think. Oi, mush. Cookie. I don't know if anybody watching this has had the opportunity to try it, but I'd be interested to hear if anybody's tried using a car, electric, electric car granny cable to charge a zero using the charge tank. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. I'd just be interested to know. Um, if I had the car here, I would actually try it right now. It would be quite quite a worthwhile thing to try. But uh, there's no reason, like I say, why it shouldn't. And that would give you a theoretical round about four kilowatts from two standard domestic sockets. Uh, that's not to be sniffed at. That would have been a fantastic result for uh, Charlie Borman and Ewan McGregor. So many options, so many options they could have used using AC charging on that trip they did. But no, they went for a bike which realize, which benefits from DC charging at properly true rapid charging rates. But when they're riding in countries which don't have any kind of mainstream rapid charging uh, infrastructure, you can't just put in rapid charging infrastructure willy nilly. It's not, you know, you're talking serious 50 kilowatt units. The units they had installed were not 50 kilowatts. You know, they were they were level two chargers. They were they were AC chargers, uh, which which don't give them any higher power rating than than they could have got from a zero. So, really, really odd choice, especially given that when they started the journey, they didn't even have that fast AC charging sorted out. You know, to to arrive at the start point of the journey and realize that you hadn't got that sorted. It's just puzzling. Was there really no? But it, for all the planning that went into that trip, all the very, very detailed planning, to not fully consider how to fast charge, even at the start point of the journey, at, at, 
a decision which delayed them three days apparently seems insane utterly insane who who let that slip the whole thing the whole start of that series smacks of them not talking to anybody with experience of electric vehicles it's really odd apart from the chap they spoke to who uh can't remember his name i'll put it down there somewhere who who advised them that no electric motorcycle could do above 70 miles it's factually inaccurate straight away so and he's a smart guy he knows his evs so it was really really odd the start of that series i have to say i am enjoying it i don't want to put a downer on it uh for anybody who hasn't watched it do watch it it, it, it is really good and um as things settle down you know the fourth fifth episodes are really really good so uh i, I don't want to have a big down on it you know ultimately they made a decision to to do the to do the journey on electric motorcycles and that's to be that's to be applauded actually because the reach those guys have into the mainstream biking community is is to be appreciated very much so it's easy to to sit back and be critical and there's some just criti criticism but fair play to them uh, well done well done to both of them for doing that doing that journey and uh, for at least opening people's mind a little bit to the world of electric motorcycling um, and on that basis give them a big thumbs up thanks for watching and uh, see you again soon hopefully